Greetings from LA, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And right now, the date is Monday, April 15th, 2024. And it's my understanding that the Criterion Collection has, a few hours ago, made its announcement with respect to its planned releases for July 2024. So if it's okay with you, I would very much like to share with you some thoughts and comments that I have with respect to those planned July releases from the Criterion Collection. So before I continue on, let me just say that again, these are my uh, initial impressions and based upon the information that I find on the Criterion website right now. So if you are interested in the details, the specifics, uh, specifications, cover art or planned cover art designs and write-ups on the films themselves as well as other films in the Criterion Collection catalog, I strongly recommend that you check the Criterion Collection website directly. Uh, for such information and it's a really wonderful resource in uh, many respects uh, so uh, I strongly recommend and encourage you to check out the Criterion Collection website uh, when you have the opportunity. Also I should point out too that these are my uh, initial impressions and so my impressions might change over time. Of course, they might change as I am directly exploring the work, the item, the uh, the Blu-ray or the the, uh, the actual physical media item when it comes time to watch them in July 2024. So uh, these are my uh, merely my initial thoughts and comments. So uh, your comments or thoughts might differ than mine, which is completely fine. Uh, and also uh, ours might change because as I say, uh, this might uh, be something that uh, when we get the actual item and explore it, you and I together, then maybe uh, we might come back to this uh, with a further engagement and further discussion. So, uh, yes, so, but if you're interested, please also feel free to let me know what your thoughts and comments are with regard to uh, the wonderful selection from the Criterion Collection. Again, planned releases from Criterion for July 2024. Okay, so first up, schedule for release on July 2nd, 2024, and this is for spine number 1224, and it seems to be scheduled for either, or you have your choice of a two-disc Blu-ray uh, release or a four-disc 4K plus Blu-ray release. And this is of a film which is described as being from the year 1973, and the filmmaker here is Sam Peckinpah. And the name of the work is Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. And this is according to the materials here, or the website here, purportedly based on a new 4K digital restoration uh, of, uh, well, here, of the 50th anniversary release. Uh, and then also there's a new 4K digital restoration of the original theatrical release. Uh, and then uh, we have a 2K digital master, a new 2K digital master of director Sam Peckinpah's final preview cut with uncompressed monorail soundtrack. So we have three distinct versions being made available uh, under this planned release for July 2024 from Criterion of this work. Uh, Pat, Garrett, Pat Garrett, excuse me, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. Sam Peckinpah's Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. It's coming to the Criterion Collection. Uh, Chris Christopherson, James Coburn, uh, with the uh, uh, with uh, and also Bob Dylan as well in many respects. So uh, what a film this is! What a film this is! Um, I am uh, really, really uh, so thoroughly delighted with this news. I had no idea this was uh, on the horizon you know i'm not i don't have my finger on the pulse of criterion rumors and news anyway so uh, uh so i i wouldn't have known anyway but uh, that being said i am so so floored uh positively so by this uh, what a film this is uh there is this is in many ways uh, one of the great uh ultimate uh, sam pick and paul film experiences 
And so uh, if uh, this is, <laughs> I'm one of the great examples of, Pe of Peck and Paul's cinema and craft. One of my favorite examples uh, ever of uh, Sam Peck and Paul's work. It could be up there, in fact, as being one of my uh, one of my favorite or among my uh, top two or three favorite uh, Peck and Paul works ever. Uh, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. What an amazing, uh, what an amazing uh, presentation. Uh, this film is with uh, riveting performances, uh, Chris Christopherson and James Colburn. My goodness, so much of the of the wear and the feel and the, the sense of uh, of uh, melancholy and urgency as well. And that, that wonderful rush and mix, uh, rush and mix that I think Sam Peckinpah does so brilliantly uh, throughout his career, but in, in particular, or especially, for example, uh, during this phase of his career. Uh, what an amazing spectacle this is, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. And so um, I also have to say that I, I, um, I don't know, I haven't seen the 50th anniversary release, so uh, this will be something that is uh, going to be um, in many ways a kind of discovery or rediscovery for me uh, for this film. Uh, but I am very pleased that we have uh, many different versions that seem to be uh, made available for this film, uh, courtesy of this new planned release from Criterion. So this is already what a dynamite way to start. Well, this is a thrilling, thrilling way to start July 2024 in the Sam Peckinpah, uh, in a Sam Peckinpah way like this. My goodness. Uh, and in this way, we have Sam Peckinpah in the Criterion Collection Physical Media Catalog. Wow. Wow. And I'm looking at uh, it looks to be packed. Uh, again, we will we'll see what uh, the actual physical media item has in store for us when we examine it, both the uh, physical trimmings as well as the, uh, the contents and the supplements, etc. Uh, but my goodness, my goodness, this looks to be a really packed release. Uh, and what a way to start uh, July, uh, you know, entering into the latter half of 2024 past the halfway point in a manner of speaking so and they're doing it criterion is with this release again scheduled for july 2nd 2024 at spy number one two two four this is the sam pick and paul film that is pat garrett and billy the kid wow next scheduled for release on july 9th 2024 and this is uh, a new 4K plus Blu-ray release uh, of a film that already exists in the Criterion Collection, in fact, at spine number 306. But it looks like, again, here we have, again, for the occasion of this year, or in July 2024, a new re-release of this employing the 4K plus Blu-ray format, plus also uh, uh, in this format, uh, relying upon or basing it upon what is dis described here as a new 4K digital re restoration of the work. Uh, so this is a film which is, again, at spine number 306. Uh, the year is 1967, and the filmmaker is Jean-Pierre Melville. And the name of the work is Le Samurai. So Le Samurai is re-returning or coming back in an alternative form here, according to what is said here in the Criterion Collection. So as we know, uh, Le Samurai already exists in a great Blu-ray. Uh, this was the high-def uh, release uh, of the film. And this was, uh, according to the back here, let me see this. It's uh, first printing 2017. And in fact, we also had an earlier, earlier DVD uh, from some time back as well. So uh, what a... What a great, great uh, way to uh, celebrate this film again. Uh, and it looks like, yes, I should point out, according to the website, uh, the Blu-ray is still available. Uh, and so that Blu-ray still being available with this cover art, I should point out. Uh, and it's based upon, according to the, uh, to the site here, the high-def digital restoration. So uh, that, still be, that still seems to be made available. But when I click on the 4K plus Blu-ray section here, it says Le Samurai with different cover art and also purported to be based on what's described as a new 4K digital restoration. So, uh, Wow. Wow, um, it'll be interesting to see the comparisons, how we can uh, uh, get a sense of the film from how we knew it before uh, uh, in, say, this previous great criterion release, by the way, 
uh, versus how we might view it and engage with it with this new 4K restoration uh, that I'm looking forward to immensely. Now, this film, The Samurai, is one of those hard-boiled classics. Um, it is uh, one of the most iconic Alain Delon performances ever. Um, and it, it has a kind of reach and sweep that I think is felt even to this very day in terms of neo-noir films, uh, the sort of uh, 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 anti-hero, uh, the uh, notion of the uh, professional killer, and also the cold iciness of a, of a almost a nihilistic philo a philosophy uh, that is very uh, cold and calculating, but also there's a lot of risk uh, when certain, say, uh, unexpected or unforeseen circumstances might enter the, into the equation. So this becomes this uh, brilliant, brilliant uh, example of style and substance and ultra cool uh, in the form of Alain Delon and uh, through the guiding hand of uh, Jean-Pierre Melville and others. So uh, Le Samurai is one of those, I think, classic, classic films. It's one of the um, uh, most uh, highly regarded works of Jean-Pierre Melville and one of the most highly regarded works uh, of this period in late 1960s because it says so much that is still very, very popular and entertaining and poignant even now. I mean, the ripple effects of this film, I think, are, are uh, without question. So... To get Le Samurai again in the Criterion Collection uh, is it's wonderful. Now, I've mentioned this before, uh, but let me say it again. You know, sometimes we will get uh, titles that already exist in the Criterion Collection on a great, say, Blu-ray release, but then we will get a re-release of it or a re-emergence of it. But this time, Criterion um, and the powers that be uh, decide upon relying on a 4K format for this. So uh, this seems to be a really great example, or potentially anyway. We'll have to see what the, the actual packaging and the actual item looks like and feels and sounds like when we get uh, when we talk about it in July, of course. But based on what I'm seeing on the website now, this seems to be a really great example here of something where we're getting um, uh, something that a film that we already have in the Criterion Collection with a number of uh, wealth of supplements and a great presentation overall uh, but it looks like Criterion is going to try to do something different or new with this newer release so that's why according to the website anyway uh, what it says there it gives me the impression that this will be relying upon a new 4k uh, transfer or restoration or presentation as well as new cover art etc so um, that is, I think, a wonderful example, or potentially anyway, of trying to give uh, Criterion customers who or might already have a title in their collection uh, reason or at least consideration and uh, 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 food for thought as to whether or not to venture into this newer uh, release. Because, again, uh, to get, give us something a little bit extra or a little bit different, I think, is, a, is a sometimes important as that enticement to uh, make us want to choose or not to choose to uh, take the 4K route of a film that we might already have and, and uh, hold dearly and cherish uh, thanks to an already uh, very strong and robust criterion release from some years back. So uh, this looks like to have the shapings of uh, something very, uh, very, uh, like a, a good example of how, how criterion might be uh, handling its 4K catalog vis-a-vis -vis, uh, its uh, current sitting titles, as it were. Uh, we shall see also how this may or may not affect uh, the supplements uh, uh, offerings here. It looks like, again, based off of my own uh, understanding of the supplements and looking at the site. It looks like I'm not sure if we're going to get any new supplements uh, here, but that's okay. What we got in the earlier Blu-ray release was very robust and, and fabulous, but uh, we shall see. We shall see what uh, uh, this uh, Criterion has uh, uh, planned up its sleeve. But in any event, I think, uh, uh, I mean, what the key point also to keep in mind for me here is this is a great, great opportunity to once again revisit this undeniable classic I mean this is so cool and it's it's got that 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 feel that contemporary feel of the time period that's evoking and it but it's it's you see these these uh, fashion choices and and images and almost symbols that are so iconic because they are embedded into the very grain of this type of film that is just carried through throughout uh, the history uh, leading up to uh, the present day. So uh, there's so many aspects of this that are that are 
uh, kind of the prototype you know, on the one hand of films to follow, and as well as being on its own merits. This is a riveting, a very uh, calculating film. It's very well planned, and there are there are a lot of twists as well um, that uh, are thrown into the path of our uh, hero or anti-hero, as well as to us, the viewer. Uh, so if you haven't seen the Samurai, uh, you are in for a real treat and re a kind of stylish thriller. It also has uh, moments of uh, poignant human drama and uh, uh, sort of suspense and action as well in this uh, package from Jean-Pierre Melville. What a film this is. Cannot wait to be able to talk about this one. Um, again, this is scheduled for release July 9th and uh, for spine number 306. Uh, this is the film Le Samurai. Next, scheduled for release July 16th, 2024. And this is for either a 4K plus Blu-ray release, two disc, or a Blu-ray release, single disc, or a DVD, single disc. And this is of a film which is described as being from the year 2023 for spine number 1226. Uh, the name of the filmmaker is Vim Vendors. And the name of the work is Perfect Days. So Perfect Days. I wanted to go see this in the movie theater when it was playing uh, very recently, actually, from the time of recording of this video. But unfortunately, just due to my own uh, schedule, I was unable to catch it at the theater. I so wanted to because uh, I heard so many wonderful things about it from uh, things that I had read, also from uh, friends of the channel, uh, people who had reached out to me directly and told me and recommended very strongly and in wonderful, glowing, emphatic terms to go see this film, Perfect Days. Unfortunately, I couldn't go see it in the theater, which was uh, one of uh, my regrets, one of many regrets of my life. Uh, but lo and behold, uh, uh, wouldn't you know it, Criterion has gone ahead and uh, planned a release of this film, uh, quite soon, in fact. Uh, so uh, uh, this looks to be uh, a wonderful, uh, wonderful bit of Criterion fate. Uh, as I'd like to uh, coin the phrase, perhaps, uh, uh, in a, a lovely way. So thank you very much for this uh, wonderful opportunity to then uh, correct my error uh, and then catch up with this film uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, so Perfect Days, the Vim Vendors film, uh, Perfect Days. But uh, I, I resisted uh, reading uh, about specifics of the film because, I, as I say, I haven't seen it yet. But I do know a little bit of the background, or I'm sorry, a little bit of the the, the Synopsis and the uh, the uh, feature uh, featuring uh, among its cast uh, the uh, actor the great actor uh, Koji Yakusho. So uh, and uh, I'm uh, a fan and admirer of the works of Vim Vendors. So uh, I look forward to uh, catching up with this at long last. Uh, this work, which as I say, uh, thanks to many people, uh, friends of the channel, you have recommended this film to me so so uh, positively and so with a, a wonderful sense of uh, welcoming engagement so I'm, I'm very happy about that thank you very much I should point out to just a number of things uh, about this is a 4k digital master uh, of a film that's a, a recent film a 2023 film so uh, it's a, a, a plus a, also a short by Vim Benders also from 2023 some uh, somebody comes into the light according to this which i have not yet seen as well so uh, but i look forward to checking that out as well i also point out too that i'm glad to see for a new title that is a title that is newly emerging in the physical media catalog we have the option not just of the 4k blu-ray not just of the blu-ray but also the dvd so as i mentioned before I'll say it again, I'm, I think the DVD format uh, is a very important format that still holds a lot of, of uh, importance and relevance. And so, uh, because uh, among, among other things, there's the price point to consider, there's also uh, the sort of reach that DVD I think still has, perhaps uh, maybe relative to past years. It might not be uh, in a place where it was uh, some years back, but I think its uh, place and relevance and significance is still uh, very, uh, very, uh, very important to uh, keep in mind even now. And also it's an opportunity yet uh, with another uh, format option too. 
uh, yet uh, have that extra possibility of yet more uh, reach to as many people as possible. So, uh, so I'm very glad to see that uh, being made available. I know the DVD format is not always made available for all titles, and perhaps uh, I can maybe uh, assume or I can imagine uh, reasonable business related reasons for that choice uh, but uh, you know that type of speculation aside it's always very nice to see when the DVD option is actually going to be made available for uh, for a new a newly emerging title such as Vim Vendor's Perfect Days so uh, well done for that oh, this is also <laughs> so exciting this is really exciting um, this is uh, entering into a kind of trend of uh, films that it seems like right Criterion uh, is is able to release uh, the, the, some films where you, they were just released they were just in the theater maybe like a month ago or a couple months prior to the announcement but then we get these great uh, Criterion uh, uh, releases of them which is always a nice surprise a really really nice surprise so Perfect Day seems to be uh, continuing in on that trend. So hopefully that trend will continue on going forward because it's always nice to see this uh, uh, contemporary release, really, really contemporary release as in from a, a few months prior. So well done of a film that I have not yet seen. So uh, extra icing on the cake. This is Vim Vendor's work, Perfect Days. Next, scheduled for release on July 16th, 2024. This is for spine number 1225. And uh, this is uh, given the option either of a two-disc Blu-ray release or a two-disc DVD release. So once again, bravo, bravo for uh, keeping the DVD format available, uh, even for newly, uh, newly entering titles into the physical media catalog of Criterion. So uh, once again, this is for spine number 1225. Uh, the film is described as being from 1964. And the filmmaker is uh, Glauber Rocha. And the name of the work is Black God, White Devil. Oh my goodness. Black God and White Devil is coming to the Criterion Collection Physical Media Catalog, purported to be based on a new 4K digital restoration uh, with a, a documentary uh, from 2016, Cinema Novo, on the Brazilian film movement. Oh my goodness. Um, and also a documentary on the director Rocha. Uh, from 2003, uh, so and uh, other supplements uh, included in this. This is uh, this is incredible. This is absolutely incredible news. You know, I'm not a, I'm not at all a, an expert when it comes to cinema. Period. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, like all the so many other people know so much more than I could ever hope to achieve. Uh, in my lifetime. So my knowledge base is incredibly, incredibly weak and, and very shallow. Uh, but uh, because of my positioning, you know, I, I took some classes in when I was in college, when I was in university, I took some film classes about the history of film and film movements and the like. And I was very fortunate to have been able to go to a university that had, I think, a really robust offering of film classes, film studies classes. And one of the classes I took uh, was a class on Brazilian cinema. And I look back on that class as being one of the greatest classes I think I've ever taken in my life. I was, oh gosh, it was, I forget what year was I, a sophomore or, or junior, I forget exactly when, uh, but uh, it was during that period, right? Uh, so it was 18, 19, uh, 20, something like that. And I was for the first time in my life, watching and talking about and learning about and, and uh, hearing from uh, the teacher and also the students. Uh, it was a fairly small uh, a class, so um, it was a uh, it was uh, uh, it wasn't a lecture class per se, but it was a, in a small room uh, with a, a select uh, group of students, uh, which made I think the, the conversation. It was really possible to have so many great conversations and ask questions about this. And one of the films that was discussed was Rocha's uh, Black God, White Devil. 
Uh, and among other works as well, we discussed like Makunaima, etc. But Black Dog, uh, Black God, excuse me, Black God, White Devil, uh, was the uh, one of the works that we discussed, and uh, it was a, a truly eye-opening uh, experience for me. Uh, this film is such an eye-opening experience. I mean, it is. It's a kind of. Um, it's a kind of uh, mix. Uh, of so many uh, points and feelings. Uh, there's the idea of the sweep of history and uh, 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 kind of um, uh, legend and mythology, as well as the currency of uh, an urgency of history at the moment, uh, and a, a collision course, which I think is another way to describe cinema, uh, revolutionary spirited cinema. Uh, and so, uh, and there's so much vigor and energy and even a type of venom and uh, pointed, uh, 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 almost even uh, kind of, how should I put it, like a, uh, a seething sense of vigor that is uh, on display here with this film, Black God, White Devil, uh, to the point where it becomes a really uh, exhilarating experience to watch. It certainly was for me. Uh, and so... Now, with the with the opportunity to be able not just to revisit this film, but revisit after a number of years, and then also to uh, to get even further context into this uh, this work, and try to remember what it was that uh, the teacher uh, was teaching to us, you know, uh, this became or this is shaping up to be one of perhaps I don't usually like to say what my top, top, top highlight of a month is, but if I were to say, uh, this could be it for me. Uh, not to take away anything from the other titles that we've just spoken about, what we might talk about in the remainder of this video, but this is huge. This is absolutely huge. Uh, and so, and also a kind of entry point as well into uh, Brazilian cinema. Uh, and so there have been some maybe points of discussion uh, throughout the Criterion collection physical media catalog is my understanding would have it but uh, again the more the merrier and if we have other works uh, like uh, Rocha's uh, Black God White Devil in the mix for as many people to watch as possible that makes me very happy indeed what a dynamic film this is and I'm so glad uh, this is going to afford me the opportunity not just to rediscover it and re-explore it but to learn more about it for the first time uh, thanks in part to some of the, uh, uh, well, to, to re-watching the film, but also to watching in the context of some of these supplements, which I look forward to exploring with you, my dear, dear friends. This is so neat. This is really neat. I can't believe this is happening. Black God, White Devil, uh, Rocha's film is coming to the Criterion Collection. Again, scheduled for release July 16th, 2024. It's either on a Blu-ray, two-disc Blu-ray, or two-disc DVD. So once again... Uh, bravo for making the DVD option available uh, for this new release schedule uh, for spine number 1225. Uh, this is Black God, White Devil. Next, schedule for release on July 23rd, 2024. And this is scheduled for spine number 1228. Uh, the film, which is described as being from the year 1993, and we have the option of a 4K plus Blu-ray 2-disc release or the Blu-ray single-disc release. Reported to be based on a new 4K digital restoration of the original's director's cut of this work. Um, and this is a work which is from the filmmaker Chen Kaige. And the name of the work is Farewell My Concubine. Chen Kaiga's Farewell My Concubine is coming to the Criterion Collection. So I am already almost out of breath uh, from the, uh, the huge news so far of this month. And to top it all off, we have, or to add to that great wealth of news of these titles that are being released, we have Farewell My Concubine, the Chen Kaiga work, Farewell, Farewell My Concubine, coming to the Criterion Collection. This is... Epic. What a film this is. This is an epic film. It is uh, spanning time and history. Um, and uh, there is a, a kind of the idea of um, there is so much um, 
uh, it's about performance and theater and passion. Uh, and uh, the, the, the story is so deeply emotional and deeply powerful of this film. Uh, Chen Kaige, wow, uh, with a performance, uh, the Leslie Chung performance here. Uh, what a, my goodness, the performances all around are just um, it's phenomenal, spectacular. And this work, Chen Kaige's uh, Farewell My Concubine, is one of the greats. And I remember, too, and I'm thinking back, again, this is uh, early to mid-90s, uh, when this film got, I think, a very uh, healthy release on uh, VHS rental and uh, video rentals and video sales even. I mean, I, I watch, was able to watch it during through that kind of channel. And uh, it was an amazing experience. It was an eye-opening experience. It was my first time uh, to watch uh, this work, uh, Chen Kaige, and uh, a, a work from China. Uh, and it was uh, this type of story that was being told many things, many points about the film as I watched it in the early to mid-90s, I was not aware of and I didn't quite understand the context fully. But that didn't prevent me, uh, I think, from really being tr so fully invested in the stories and the characters I was watching it unfold. It, it was a, a magical uh, spectacle that was so intricate and uh, quite emotionally overwhelming. Uh, to the point of being one of the uh, memorable experiences and just opening my eyes uh, to the world of uh, uh, Chen Kaige and others in the uh, in the same or similar generation of filmmakers, uh, and so and I remember yes my this this prompted so many discussions. Again, I would uh, have discussions with uh, uh, people again talking about the 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 good old college days. I remember one of my dear dear friends. Uh, who's named Tony, and uh, he was from China, and he would be talking to me about uh, his, uh, and he loved cinema, and whenever we'd be talking about uh, Chen Kaige or Zhang Yimou or, or others from the same generation, he would be so lively and so spirited and talking to me, sharing to me uh, with me so many details about uh, his experiences and his understandings as well. One of my dear, dear friends, uh, and Farewell My Concubine was a one such discussion. A many, it was a topic of many discussions that we had uh, uh, throughout the years uh, while I was there in the college town. So uh, it brings back a lot of personal memories as well as parts along my own uh, cinema journey, which was then still uh, just maybe in, in its nascent stages. And even now it's in its own nascent stages because I have so many things that I have yet to learn. Uh, but but Pharaoh My Concubine was just one of those uh, important uh, discoveries that is now finding its way back into the conversation of my own uh, cinema journey thanks to, among other things, the Criterion release plan for July. Now, it's a new 4K digital restoration of the original director's cut, as it says here. So um, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to uh, uh, rely on uh, the memories that I had of watching this earlier and then reacquainting myself with this, but courtesy of this new, uh, described as the new 4K restoration as I uh, engage with it again. But uh, I will... Uh, I am already cherishing the moment. I'm anticipating it so highly. And I was already out of breath talking about the previous releases, but still, my goodness, this is making me so... Uh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> this is why it's hard for me to say which is my favorite of the month, because they're all my favorites, potentially. Uh, or they each can be in their own ways my favorites. So this is... This, is, uh, th this, this has the potential for being very big indeed. So, Chen Kaige's Farewell My Concubine is coming to the Criterion Collection physical media catalog. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. Um, let me say that again. The Farewell My Concubine from Chen Kaige is coming to the Criterion Collection physical media catalog. My goodness. Uh, wow. Wow. This is amazing. Uh, again, scheduled for release July 23rd, 2024 for spy number 1228. Uh, Farewell My Concubine. Wow. But certainly not least, this is so cool. Scheduled for release July 23rd, 2024 for spine number 1227. 
and this is for a film described as being from the year 1983. We have the 4K Blu-ray release, that's two discs, or we have the single disc Blu-ray as an option. No DVD option, but that's okay. Uh, we still have the film uh, that is being offered here. Purported to be based on the new 4K digital restorations of the director's cut and the original theatrical release uh, supervised and approved by director, director being Paul Brickman. Uh, and this is the film which is Risky Business. Wow! <laughs> wow! Risky Business is also coming to the Criterion Collection. This is amazing! This is really amazing! What a film this is! Um, this was a film that it, it, it was and is huge, huge for many people. Um, it is singing the 80s. Um, it was in the early 80s for me, so I, I couldn't watch it in the theater. I was a, a child of the 80s, but in 1983, I would have been about four years old, so I wouldn't have been able to see this in a theater. I didn't. My parents did. And I remember my mom in the household, she was really uh, taken with this film, uh, Risky Business, the music and uh, the story, in particular the music and, and Tom Cruise. Um, and, uh, uh, and speaking of the cast, we have Tom Cruise and also uh, Rebecca De Mornay, of course. Wow. Uh, and uh, But uh, this was part of the almost lexicon, the 80s uh, vernacular, if you will. Uh, so much to be said about this. It's also kind of a journey film. Uh, I did manage to catch up with it a little bit later when I was older. Uh, and on VHS, you know, I, I it, it got a lot of buzz uh, and a lot of, uh, there was a lot of talk about it. Uh, but again, four years old, five years old, I, I wasn't I wasn't quite ready to, to watch it or, or was able to watch it. So maybe a couple years later when I was able to rent it on my own volition uh, to quite, kind of see what the fuss was about in a manner of speaking. My goodness, it was a, uh, it, it, it was a real treat on the one hand. Uh, and a lot of surprises, too, uh, as I recall, in terms of what I thought it would be versus what it was. Now, uh, it is, I think, so many things at once, but uh, there is a, uh, uh, and I think uh, when I, as I get older, I realize that many things uh, that I had uh, maybe experienced with the film firsthand, or not firsthand, but when I experienced the film for the first time, a lot of things that I now see as I'm much older, uh, and uh, uh, revisiting this film, Risky Business, uh, I see as being very almost uh, kind of a, having a, a, almost a social commentary or critique uh, in a certain manner of speaking, as well as the story uh, between Rebecca De Mornay's character and Tom Cruise's character uh, in this, as well as a lot of the, there's a, there's a kind of a emotional uh, weight to it, which I think is uh, very welcoming and, and, and very uh, uh, warm and surprising. And there's also so many iconic moments and iconic beats that I think really much uh, uh, emphatically scream from the rooftops uh, the brilliance of the 80s. So uh, this is a this is a, and as well as uh, seeing Tom Cruise and Rebecca De Mornay, I mean, in many ways, this was one of the defining roles of Tom Cruise. It still is one of the defining roles of Tom Cruise, uh, and uh, in many, and it's just uh, key moments. And I like the choice of the the, the cover art. Uh, it's uh, there's a very famous uh, cover art that's used, I think, in a lot of the marketing throughout the years of Risky Business. But the the choice of cover art here, with a particular moment in the film, is regarded as perhaps the most famous moment of the film uh, is uh, it's it's a really apropos choice so wow wow uh, this is coming to the criterion collection you know I'm not a I'm not a uh, an expert when it comes to the um, the physical media history of risky business nor am I of any of the films in fact of uh, the releases of this month of July uh, but uh, again this is uh, um, very uh, entertaining, uh, and uh, this has uh, uh, so many uh, legendary moments uh, that also make it a very, uh, enter very make it very um, uh, engaging and welcoming uh, and inviting. While also, I think, uh, revealing a lot of things that uh, I think uh, uh, were definitely lost upon me as I watched it uh, in my my somewhat younger days, but. Uh, now I can uh, recognize them again. So uh, again, it's an, it invites rewatchable. It's a rewatchable film, so it, it invites rewatches in a very great and uh, entertaining way. So, and it looks like there are so many uh, different, uh, or there there are um, uh, there are apparently going to be 
uh, different versions of the film being made available, and then also uh, some new uh, supplements as described as new. So this is risky business. Wow, risky business is coming to the Criterion Collection, uh, courtesy of uh, well, thanks to the 4K restorations of uh, various releases. So, well done, Criterion, for being able to do this. This is great. Again, scheduled for release July 23rd, 2024, for Spine Number One Two Two Seven. Paul Berkman. The film is risky business. Wow. <sighs> okay, so I am once again just. Uh, <laughs> I'm floored. I am totally floored. Just across the board, this is this is utterly brilliant. Across the board, this is utterly brilliant. Starting off with a bang with uh, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid and a packed release, um, uh, looks like, with respect to that. And then you go from that to, uh, let's stick with the, the, the new releases for a moment. We've got... Um, uh, the iconic films, again, legendary films, uh, Farewell My Concubine, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Chen Kaiga film, and then Glauber Rocha's film, um, uh, Black God, White Devil. My goodness, Black God, White Devil is coming to the Criterion Collection. Farewell My Concubine is coming to the Criterion Collection. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. And then Risky Business, one of the most, um, uh, uh, one of the most uh, pop cultural and significant works of the early 80s is coming to the Criterion Collection. This is incredible, absolutely incredible. But not just that, not just that. Uh, Vim Bender's Perfect Days, uh, one of the most uh, just glowing, warm, uh, inviting works. I'm so looking forward to watching. I haven't had a chance to see it yet. I have, I'm so looking forward to watching this. It's great. As well as the opportunity to revisit one of the all-time classics uh, in sort of thriller suspense uh, noir, uh, Alan Delon, Jean-Pierre Melville films, that's Le Samurai. So, um, is, is, uh, I, I don't know, is, are you like me? Are you, uh, my, my brain is on overload. And so it's just, uh, um, uh, ecstatic, uh, through the roof excitement for this. I'm just, uh, this is, uh, this is great. This is great. Now, of course, We'll have to wait and see, right? We'll have to wait and see what the presentations have in store for us. We'll have to wait and see about the presentations and supplements uh, and the like. Uh, and uh, maybe in that department, when we actually engage with the items themselves, there might be things that we, uh, in our, uh, maybe our excitement, we might uh, uh, sit down and, and, and find certain things to critique and to uh, raise in terms of comments. Or we might find things that we didn't recognize now at this time, but now uh, as we or uh, as we explore the title, uh, we might find even more points of uh, glowing praise and, and uh, the ability to uh, uh, celebrate these films. Because at the end of the day, of course, uh, the points of these releases, and indeed any release from uh, Criterion or, or any other label for that matter, point of the film the releases at the end of the day is the opportunity to be able to watch and to celebrate uh, these films and to examine to explore to engage with them right to engage with cinema uh, and if uh, we get great examples or great opportunities to do so like the examples that are uh, being provided by criterion plan for July then uh, as a film goer or a film lover uh, on my own personal cinema journey that makes me very very happy indeed um, and I should also point out, too, that I'm glad to see that the DVD format is still, again, very robust. It's not across the board for every title uh, being made available. I understand that and acknowledge that. But still, where it's being made available, that's still very important and big news. And in particular with some of the titles this month for newly emerging titles in the physical media catalog. Now, that's not something we always see. Uh, with new titles for Criterion. So when we do see that, I think it's great news indeed. Um, and also I should point out too that for some of these uh, releases, we're getting different versions of the films. Uh, so that gives the opportunity for uh, kind of packed packed uh, release as well as an examination of uh, different iterations of the same same work of art. You know, I, I, understand, I can understand, of course, that this ability to release 
as many versions of the same work as possible. That might not be within the the parameters of, say, the license agreement between Criterion and the licensors with regard to a particular work, or etc. So, I understand that sometimes it's not possible. So, you might have, uh, you might think of uh, past Criterion releases where. It had just one version of the film, but you knew that there were other versions that, uh, for whatever reason, weren't made available on that Criterion release. So, uh, I would always feel that to a little, maybe a little um, uh, hint of uh, kind of, oh, I wish they'd had this version here and there. And I appreciate it that that can't be for every single release by Criterion ever. But when it does happen, when it does happen, I think that makes it just all the more enticing. So I'm glad to see that that's being done, at least for some of the titles here. Um, so that, I think, is very important to keep in mind. Um, I, I should point out as well, it's great to see the, the 4K the 4K format uh, robust and alive as always in the hands of Criterion. I mean, of course, we have many other labels uh, in the marketplace and uh, many labels doing 4K releases so well, maybe uh, from the point of view of uh, other, maybe from the point of view of some uh, consumers, uh, maybe uh, other labels might be doing the 4K market quote unquote better than Criterion. Uh, if you feel that way, that's certainly, uh, I think, a reasonable stance to have, not a problem. But from my vantage point, um, I think it's uh, a wide enough marketplace to see. Uh, it's wonderful to see different houses, different labels doing their own thing with 4K uh, releases, and Criterion is certainly there. So I'm glad to see Criterion. Uh, continuing strong with its 4K releases. And on that note, I, as I mentioned before, with the context of uh, the Le Samurai release, it's nice to see Criterion, at least on paper, uh, the virtual paper anyway, uh, trying to give us something a little bit different with its new release of a title that already exists in the current physical media catalog. Now, Criterion doesn't do this all the time. In fact, I would say most of the time, more often than not, Criterion gives us, quote unquote, the same cover art or the same uh, materials. It's just the, uh, it, it's now made available on the 4K disc. Uh, so uh, uh, maybe it, the, the presentation materials themselves might even be the same as well. Uh, so when that happens, then the question is, is it worth it to get the 4K release if you already have the Blu-ray release? And perhaps for some, uh, the answer might be yes, but maybe for others, the answer might be no. But in that conversation, whenever Criterion gives us something a little bit different or a little bit extra to make the new 4K-based release uh, stand apart from the currently sitting, say, Blu-ray release or the DVD release, that's, I think, a lot of fun. And you don't have to necessarily get the the, the newer release if you're happy with the previously released release. Uh, it's your prerogative, of course, and so uh, and that's not a problem at all. You know, there's no f nothing that forces one to have to go the 4K route every single time, of course. But it is part of the conversation, and if there's something that uh, allows for yet a different approach to things or, or maybe another opportunity to examine the same film that you love but from a, a slightly different vantage point, etc., or, or something akin to that kind of conversation, this is very exciting news indeed. So uh, in that long-winded way, th that's my way of trying to say that, at, at least on paper, I'm very excited for what Le Samurai, the 4K release, has in store for us when we get a chance to see it, uh, courtesy of Criterion. So. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot here. There is a lot here. There is a lot here. There's a lot here. Um, yeah. Um, gosh, Glauber Rocha is coming to the Criterion Collection. Shenkai Go is coming to the Criterion Collection. My goodness. Uh, Sam Peckinpah is <laughs> coming. My goodness. Sam Peckinpah in the Criterion Collection Physical Media Catalog. Oh my goodness, this is, um, uh, and uh, my goodness, this is great. Paul Brickman's Risky Business. And then uh, the, right, the, the film that I haven't seen yet, which is uh, Perfect Days. Perfect timing, perfect timing for Perfect Days. Uh, and then the Samurai I just mentioned here before. So. Uh, I guess maybe just as a closing note, uh, perhaps there might be other Janus contemporaries titles that could be in the mix that might get announced later. Who knows? Well, of course, keep an eye out on the site for that. Um, I don't see any Janus contemporaries at the, at the, for July at the time uh, of watching this or at the time of making this video, but that might change. We'll have to uh, check the website regularly for any updates. Also, I don't see any news 
on the horizon at the moment with regard to any box sets, you know, those huge, giant box sets like the Agnes Varda set from some years back, or the Pasolini set from last year, or the uh, World of Wonka Y set, etc. So it's, it's, it's always nice to get huge sets uh, uh, with extra size dimensions, etc. I don't see any news about that yet, but that's okay. That's, that's fine. Uh, if those uh, arrive or not, again, uh, we will uh, wait with uh, a, I think, a healthy degree of you know, speculation and anticipation. But uh, if those come or if they don't, whatever the case is, uh, we will come to those uh, discussion points when we will. But in the meantime, we have these releases to uh, welcome us, to engage us, and to uh, invite us into uh, the cinema world with all the discussion points and all the wonderful uh, celebrations of the legacies and the histories and the, dis and, uh, the conversations uh, that uh, hopefully uh, can be had with uh, a watch of these films. So that's, yeah, I am um, uh, now spent of energy. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to end it here. Uh, but I hope that my lack of maybe if I feel tired or exhausted now uh, don't let that uh, don't and please don't interpret that as being any in any way my an interpretation of my feelings on the films because on the contrary my heartbeat is racing and my emotional level uh, is just uh, it's it, it heart pulsingly uh, effervescent thanks to the July planned releases from Criterion. So what are your thoughts, my dear, dear friends? Uh, please let me know in the comments section below. As always, I am very, very, very much interested to hear what it is you have to say. Anything good, anything bad, anything between, whatever you feel, my dear friends, because uh, your uh, views count and your opinions count. So uh, please, please uh, let me know in the comment section below. All right, my dear friends. So. That's it for now. So until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. Please, please, please be happy and healthy and well. That's really important. So let me say it a third time. Please, please be happy and healthy and well. And yes, uh, once you've taken care of all the most important things in your life, uh, your family, friends, and loved ones, your treasures, once you've taken care of all the important things, uh, yes, please continue to want a lot of great, 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 great 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 movies because you deserve it my dear dear friends so uh, with that thank you and cheers